view this as actually an aggregation of what we currently understand science to say on the subject instead of actually this is certainly not Goth's, Goth's work it's really an aggregation then in terms of just an understanding to go actually into, into the detail is that practically actually the the, COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 virus which then causes COVID-19 it's 0.1 mic micrometers in size micrometers in size it dies at 56 degrees centigrade that's important and then it's also then and, and not certainly like the early WhatsApp days when they said, no, well, when summer comes, you, you don't have to worry. Then it's also viable up to nine days. And that's based on 22 studies. The early studies show that she had 72 hours it was viable on plastic and steel. And that still stands. But they also found on the, the princess where that was a cruise ship that they found viable teeters of up to 14 days. But the 22 average or mean studies, average studies showed at nine days and so that's what we take uh, the viability to be then in terms of and the reason why I'm covering this detail in transmissions is that it has really practical implications for ventilation in fact we can't really understand how to actually control if we don't understand what we're controlling and this is a good case in point is that the the size of the droplet or the aerosol is a uh, is critical we often speak of actually the size of 0.1 and we, we then wear masks and we wear use filters and we say that fine, actually we compare then the size of the filter, the size of the mask, then to the virus, but that's not correct. And the reason why that's not correct is this, this, this virus as in all viruses, never travel alone. The virus, airborne virus is not na naked in that it travels with, with water, it travels with actually protein, it travels with actually salt and this makes uh, the size of then the the droplets substantially bigger so that's and you see the last point of here the physics is the same for all viruses so it really doesn't matter how big the virus is it's really the size of the the droplet and what we're controlling is the size of then the droplet or the particle which we uh which the virus actually then is in it's also you could have very high concentrations, many, many viruses in the single droplet. And then also importantly for ventilation is the size of the carrier droplet aerosol. It defines transport. It says how long it stays aloft. It's not based on the 0.1 micron. It's based on a much larger particle. It says how far it can travel. So we know that different, much larger particles or aerosols can actually then remain longer for far longer periods than actually smaller ones it says how quickly it falls into surfaces it says how, where it deposits in the respiratory system and you'll see that i'll speak about that later we also then it speaks about then how efficiently it's removed by masks and filters so not only and greg and i were actually having this discussion where not only n95 uh, ffp2 ffp3 masks are effective because Although we measure and say that at the FFP2 mass, you measure them against actually a 0.3 micron, and you then say, well, it must control 94%. It must filter out these 0.3 micron. In fact, it's the, the critical size of these droplets that needs to filter out is far larger. In a similar way, we often speak of and compare then the size of, we say, well, actually, we need a HEPA filter. Well, actually, if the virus is a far larger virus, practically speaking, because it's traveling in this larger droplet, it means that not only HEPA filters are actually efficient, we can or effective at actually removing the virus. You can actually get far uh, actually filters with far larger apertures that can still be effective because it's really actually controlling then the size of the, the droplet that this virus is actually traveling in. And then the physics is the same for all viruses. And then and this is another key learning and i think that everything we share today is just based on what we understand our current understanding to be uh, just like i'm not saying that anything is actually cast in stone a lot of the things which i've taken here we've looked at research and this is the best guess on what research says at the moment if better research comes along it'll mean that it'll actually replace what i've said and so we're not saying anything emphatically but we are saying that we have a far better understanding of then the disease actually controlling it than we actually had 
certainly in the early days. And one of these has been the understanding that droplets or aerosol inside the body and outside the body are different sizes. And the reason this is important for ventilation is if we're trying to actually control a particle, which is then this, we, because I spoke about, you see at WHO, the World Health Organization, spoke about then this less than and, and larger than actually then five microns. They said that actually then if it's, if it's less than five micron, it's actually an aerosol. If it's greater than five micron, it's actually a droplet. And inside the body, that works great because if you inhale then these, these, these droplets of aerosol, the one is that the, the particles larger than five micron, that'd be taken out of, out of actually circulation by your upper respiratory tract. And the ones that are smaller than five microns, they can find their, their way down to your lower respiratory tract, including your, uh, your alveoli. Now, if you're then talking outside the body, and really, that thing is where things actually become different. And the, the less than and greater than five micron doesn't work as a practical tool. Is that the, the physical, the physics based cutoff for actually then droplets aerosol is in fact around 60 to 100 micron. Is that we talk about that uh, these large, uh, large droplets are greater than 60 to 100 micron. And also then this is really what we talk about is spray borne or ballistic droplets. So what it means that these literally shoot out and they sprayed onto the person. And so we talk about then large droplets in terms of outside the body, they sprayed onto the body as a form of contact transmission versus actually then particles which are less than 60 micron, they then are aerosols actually, and they are inhaled uh, or certainly they travel outside of, of of the body and they so when we're talking about air conditioning we have to then understand how the the droplets and the aerosol actually behave and the size of them outside of the body and so we're saying outside of the body it's actually less than 60 to 100 that's your aerosol actually greater than 60 to 100 that's your large droplets and it's also where these these droplets actually fall they have to find then cells which are susceptible and it to becoming actually infected and that's why we have then ace2 receptors actually we found them in the conjunctive of the eye the the nose and actually the mouth and that's where understanding actually this this understanding actually helps us to say that the the eyes for instance are an important source of transmission and that face shields from the direct uh, ballistic drops they add real value and this is also then about understanding uh, in relation to is, is it at, at short contact or large contact? For example, if you're going to use a, you, you're a, in a situation where you have working within a meter, half a meter of the person, well, then actually your, your face shield is going to have applications, going to actually have value. If you're talking at, across the room, well, the face shield really doesn't it's not protecting against the ballistic actually drops or, or the, the drops that have been sprayed on. So understanding what we're talking about uh, and how then the, the droplets and the aerosol they have outside the body is important. And I think that just to say WHO, they created confusion by using the same numbers inside and outside the body. So this is important, you'll see for ventilation. So we define transmission by exposure path. So that as a barrier is that it doesn't depend on the behavioral uh, um, mm -hmm. but but one also needs to consider that ventilation um, is primarily a dilution uh, uh, control so for people sitting close to one another and for people who are breathing heavy say for example not that particular uh, environment but in, in the uh, in an office environment but let's say you're in a factory or shut down or somewhere where people are breathing heavily um, and you have people close to each other. Under those circumstances, you're going to need additional layers of control. Um, but even in an office environment, people sitting close to each other, um, the, the aerosol scientists, this is a science that Garth and I have recently discovered, they talk of the plume range, P-L-U-M-E, plume range and room range. So plume range means you're breathing closely enough to the person near you to 
to, to breathe on that person. And in plume range, ventilation has, is less effective. At room range, for the rest of the room, mm. ventilation is incredibly effective. So perhaps just in summary then, the point that you're making is that if you're sitting closely enough to be in someone's plume, breathing plume, then that's where masks and other controls are very necessary. And so yeah, they bring us to the uh, last point, the, the, the bring us to the conclusion that multiple layers of controls are really where your ultimate success lies.